This is Fred, this is Scott Reed from the Orange County Register. Fred, what do you think Aunt Virginia would think about tonight? Well, she would think I did some great things. I accomplished something that was put in the work. Coming where I come from, adopted 13 childs and 26 people in one household. I feel like she would think I did great things and accomplished some great things today. Fred, what, what was the defining moment for you in deciding to concentrate on the 100 and, and how much difference does that make focusing on just on that shorter race? I feel like there's no such, not so much different in my training. I'm still training for the 400 to accomplish some great things in the 400. I feel like the defining moment is me going to practice and put some great times down in, in the training sessions. Sean, here at the front. Uh, Fred, congratulations, epic performance, epic race. Um, is it true that you've been watching back the video of last year's Olympic final and you keep telling yourself, push, push, and what were you thinking, though, in those final 10 metres when Marvin was ahead and you were closing uh, and so on? Well, I lost the Olympics by 0 .04 a second. I saw a brace in front of me. He dipped early, and I dipped at the right time and got the job done on today. And you're, you're, the way you did it, with your arms back, it was a bit, your chin pointed up, it was a little bit like Superman, wasn't it? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't feel nothing in that race. I got to rewatch that race. Jonathan? A uh, question here from Jonathan Galt, Let's Run uh, When you guys were on your victory lap, the crowd burst into a cheer of USA a couple times. I was wondering, could you guys hear that and what you guys thought when you heard it? <clears throat> yeah, um, obviously, you know, we heard it. Um, it was special to us, you know, to come out and uh, to get the job done on home soil uh, in this fashion. Uh, what more could we ask for? Okay. <laughs> yeah, man, it was it, it was a good moment. Uh, to be able to have a crowd behind us. Uh, I feel like like we've been telling all the interviewers today that this was what we planned for, and to be able to have the crowd. As loud as it was, it, it was a it was a moment I don't think none of us gonna forget. Uh, hi, Fred again. Uh, the only two times this has been achieved previously, with the winner was a certain Carl Lewis. How does it feel for you to be up there alongside a great like that? I feel amazing to get a um, clean sweep. The greats did in '91, and the greats of 2022 did it today. Fred, this doesn't mean, to, I don't mean to sound insensitive here, but um, I feel I should ask, can you, have you ever established contact with your parents? Because like, obviously it's a very harrowing story. Um, feel free to answer or not. No, I talk to my parents every day. Um, what happened before is not what's going to happen um, now. I'm a grown man, and I can have a relationship with my parents. And were they here tonight? Uh, no, they was not here tonight, but I guarantee they was watching. Uh there was a lot of talk last year at the Olympics that the United States men didn't win an individual gold medal on the track. You guys have gotten it done in the first men's final. Fred, what does it feel like, and does it feel like redemption at all for uh, for Tokyo? I feel like it was no, I feel like it was no redemption. What happened last year? What's happened last year? This year is a new year, and we got the job done on this year. Fred, can you maybe tell us a little bit about? How did it feel at home when you grew up with 13 kids? I mean, where did you share? How many rooms did you share? Can you maybe give us some? Um, yeah, I can say that. Uh, I actually grew up in San Antonio, and then I moved to Taylor, Texas um, around like 2005. And me and my brothers and sisters, we got adopted by my Aunt Virginia. And we had one bedroom. It was 13 of us in one bedroom. We was on the pallet. And... <laughs> At the end of the day, it was basically every other um, house. We all have fun. We enjoy ourselves, and uh, we're doing great things right now. Sorry, apologies, Fred, but your story is just so amazing. Um, do you see yourself now as a role model? Because there are a lot of kids that grow up incredibly tough times, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. Not many have experienced what you've gone through. Would you like to see yourself as a role model? Would you like to be seen by the wider US public as someone that actually can inspire change in, in the next generation. People have gone through tough times like you. I feel like everybody is a role model to somebody and 
for me, I feel like I've been a role model to a lot of people going from the junior college to Texas A&M and to be sponsored by Nike and to be on the podium from 2017 all the way to now. I feel like every day is a bunch of youths and stuff looking up to me. And if I can do it, they can do it. Hi, Fred. Um, what motivates you? What drives you? What is that thing that you always look at and say, I must achieve this? What's motivating me is coming where I come from, not being in the same predicament. And for the future, is just keep on accomplishing great things. And you don't want to be in the same predicament as you was when you were younger. Fred from Relations. Um, as someone that wins the 100 meter, your follow in the footsteps of Usain Bolt, um, do you feel that what he did is something that you, you could do as well? Is that something that's within reach? Usain Bolt is probably a role model to all of us. He did great things, and I think we all want to be at the podium or um, to his standard. He did something that not too many done. He got the world record in 100, and he got the world record in 200. I feel like we all want to be up there with him. This is a question for Bromel, uh, Trayvon. Hakim was uh, in the final. What did you think about it? Uh, I feel like I, I expected him to. Uh, me, Marv, and Hakim, we both, we all trained in the same group. Uh, the level of uh, training that we put in, uh, the expectations of running fast, it, it doesn't get belittled. So I didn't expect nothing less than him to be in the, in the final and do what he had to do. I can't hear you. Yeah. Did you know that, that that was the first Japanese uh, runner uh, in the final? Oh, no, I, I, I never knew that. But like I said, I don't expect nothing less than him. Uh, for him to come out here and do and do what he did, like we, we was all excited for him, even watching him through the rounds. Uh, he's worked hard day in and day out, just like many of us. So he deserved it just like everyone else. Fred, <clears throat> were you disappointed with the time after running 979 in the prelims? And the second part is is Marvin said he beat you in cornhole. Do you want a rematch? For like you can't get um, <laughs> only thing that mattered on the day was the W and I got the job done. Hmm? I'm up for it. I guarantee I will win too. Marvin, do you wanna to respond to that? I mean I'm up two I'm up two one, so he got some catching up to do. Two one where? You heard me. <laughs> we were not in the same race, but anyways. Uh, Fred, one of the things you talk about most often is your garden. Um, how, how, how are your crops doing? Oh, well, my crops is actually doing good. Before I left, I cut some squash off. I ate some spinach out the garden, and it's amazing. Why are you laughing, Marvin? <laughs> We've heard Fred's story. Um, Marvin, I saw you, I, I think, 2014. Richard Kilty, a British friend, to beat you in the world indoors. It looked then you were going to be the next big thing. It's, it's taken a while. Can you just talk about kind of the, your ups and downs? And perhaps Trayvon as well, you know, you're spending $300,000 on your, get your injuries back. Ask that. <laughs> $300,000? Marvin, tell, you, tell your story. I got you. Tell um, your story. <laughs> tell your story. I got you. This um, is the time. It's been a long one. You know, obviously I made the team in uh, 2016, you know, in 100 in this venue. Um, I think I finished like 14th overall, so, you know, not much to write home about. Um, I walked away to play American football. I was with uh, the Indianapolis Colts in 2017, the Seahawks in 2018. Um, I did a developmental league in like 2019, and I think in the very first game I broke my arm, and I realized right then and there, yeah, my football dream might be over. Um, I decided right then and there, to come back to track. Um, obviously, I'm back now, you know, coming back last year. Um, well, actually, I came back in 2020 indoors. I think I finished second. Uh, then I ended up having like a major surgery that I never really talked about. Obviously, you know, Trayvon, uh, he's telling me to tell the story. Um, I think my appendix rupture had some, uh, had some uh, intestinal blockage. I think I had staples, like, like eight staples, you know, from my belly button down to like the pubic area. Uh, sat out for, obviously, 2020 was COVID. Sat it out, um, came back 20, last year, 
had the the blunder in the semis. So to come back this year to you know to be so close, you know, to get a medal, to just keep fighting, it speaks to my perseverance, it speaks to my character as an athlete. Um, it just you know tells you you know who I am. Yeah. Uh Shoot, my agent right here, he can tell you, man, all of 2016 to 2019, man, we've been all over the world seeing so many doctors trying to get this Achilles right. Uh, 2018, I, I didn't know if I really wanted to return back to the sport because it was that tough. Uh, had two Achilles surgeries, obviously, from my history of injuries that you all know about. It's, it's hard to wake up sometimes, man. Like, Marvin can tell you, at practice, my ankles be cracking, hips be cracking, everything just – if I feel like an old man, even though I'm young. Uh, so to be able to stay motivated through all that, it's, it's, it's tough, man, when you deal with those type of injuries. But it was a long road to having to go all over the world and see people and them tell you that, hey, it may not happen. So, But to be in this moment with the guys that I know, uh, I feel like it was all worth it. Brad, can you briefly talk about the relationship with your coach? Because I think, um, if I understood him correctly, that he, he could relate to a lot um, what you've been through as well. Well, me and my coach got a good relationship. Um, we big, went back home to his home country to get everything from the earth. And the training was hard. And he said, if you want to accomplish great things, you got to sacrifice some stuff. And I sacrificed some stuff to be world championship this year. Uh, Marvin and Trayvon, just to follow up on what you were saying about your injuries, what keeps you going, um, you know, to, to fight back when, when those injuries are so serious? To, what keeps you coming back? Um, you, you see the end goal, you know. You know that you can be one of the guys up here on the podium, you know. Um, so every day you just keep fighting like hell uh, to make it happen, you know, no matter what happens. Um, and it's really just about uh, – going out and working hard and, and, and finally making your dreams come true? Uh, man, I, I couldn't say it better than what Marvin said. For us, man, ever since me and Marvin started training together, this has been the goal, to be able to go out there and execute and do what we got to do to get on the podium. Man, it, like I said, it's, it's been a long journey. It's been a long road, and I think that's what motivates both us when we go to practice. It's like, look, we can't make this decision and waste, and waste the decision as well. So we work hard every single day. We push each other to limits, man. Like, I couldn't explain the stuff that we'd be dropping in practice as far as times. Like, we really want this. Just all three of us wanted it, you know what I'm saying? So the, the deal with the things that we deal with, the deal with adversity, uh, that's, that's just what comes with the game. Any further questions for the medalist in the men's 100 meters? Sean? Just quickly, Fred, um, can you talk about the 200? I think people forget about um, what you did last year. You know, you went very quickly in the semis, didn't you, through final. Um, and, and where do you see yourself going for the relay? Because as good as you guys are, your relay team has been not great. And will that really change this year? Or will you be beaten by the Brits or someone else? Can you repeat that question? <laughs> Do you think you'll be beaten by the Brits this year in the 4 by 100 meter relay? I don't think we'll be be by no one. We put the work in, and we're going to come some great things in these upcoming days. All right, if there are no further questions, thanks, gentlemen. Congratulations, and have a great night. Thanks, guys.